All right, so we got all our gear laid out here. We've got the stamps, Ashler Slate stamps. We got our sprayers with the liquid release. We got our texture rollers. We want to use them. We got our flat shoes for walking on the stamps with here in the beginning. You know, mag float. We're in the beginning stages of getting it, you know, starting over here. So we use the funny float to reach out and get as much magged as we can. And then I'll get on there with, I got my skids over there, but that's kind of how we start. And it's still, it's still relatively soft right now. It's a little bit too soft to get on, but we're just magging out the bull float lines, giving us a little bit better surface. Let's, let's check it right here. See what this feels like. Yeah, that's firming up pretty good. I mean, I can still press in pretty easily with my fingers, but you can tell it's firming up and, you know, in order to get from that side to this side, you can't wait too long. Hey everybody, so as you can see, we got a pretty big stamp job ahead of us today. And there's actually another one up top in the front of the house. There's a walkway up there we're doing too. And that's kind of where I am up there because they're both, they both happen to be going about the same time. So <clears throat> right now, right now we're just getting this kind of magged out, getting it prepped. It's really close to being ready to start stamping. And as you can see, we're in the sun. So that's going to even speed things up a little bit. So as soon as that's me getting out there on my knee boards, as soon as I get this magged out, and I'm going to jump up top. I'm going to mag that walkway out, and we'll stamp that. And that's going to be in a different video, so make sure you uh, subscribe to come back and see the walkway up there. That's pretty cool, too. So this is how we start our prep on any stamp job, is we like to mag out and get rid of all those bull float lines, you know, get the surface to a nice, a nice kind of like smoothish, tight paste on the surface to stamp some people do stamp right over it the way it is um, we don't typically like to do that you can also you know you could run a fresno over this or you could just funny float it kind of like darren's reaching out there with a funny float and kind of funny float and everything uh, but this one was pretty large it was pretty good size and the trouble with just using those you know whether it's a fresno or a funny float it's hard to get right up against the house really really good when you just use those so sometimes you got to get on it by hand like i'm doing right now and sometimes it's quicker to get on it by hand obviously uh honestly just to get things magged out and get them get them looking real nice now we don't fresno things in me fresno is kind of like using a steel trial like a big steel trial on a handle we don't typically do that in maine because of all the freeze thaw cycles we get we don't want to seal the surface of this off too soon so we like to kind of stamp an open surface that's why we just use a mag float or a funny float and that's always worked good for us you can see the boys back there they're getting ready to they're getting started with the stamping we're using a majestic ashler slate from butterfield colors on this one we got we actually got two sets of stamps because of how wide this is and uh that we know that we're going to be stamping up top also so i'll need a few of those stamps up top here at the same time and we're using just a clear liquid release because we're gonna we're gonna uh, texture enhance the color afterwards when we come back to saw it and clean it we'll put some added color to it then you'll see how we do that later in the video this, now like i said earlier this is about a thousand square feet it's a pretty good size of a concrete patio and it's a curved concrete patio. We used uh, poly metaforms for the curves on this when we formed it, when we poured it. And those are really, I would recommend using those forms if you've got to formed up anything curved. And they also have some really nice rigid ones too, so you can form up straight stuff. So there's four of them out there around. Darren, Luke, uh, Harvey, and Sean. Now Harvey, Harvey's kind of in the back right there in the middle. He works for himself. And he just comes and helps us whenever we call him. So he's great about that. And Sean back there, he isn't the one on the concrete yet. But he also, he's a good friend of mine. He comes and works whenever we call him. He's actually a retired firefighter. He was 30 some odd years a firefighter. And he, you know, he was a lieutenant. And he retired from the firefighting. But he also did concrete his whole life. You know, his dad did concrete. So... You know, Sean helped his dad when he was young, and then he took over the, all the forms and the panels, and he did, he did the walls, he did the floors, and he would hire us to come do some of his floors, some of his bigger floors sometimes that he didn't want to do. So, you know, I've been friends with Sean for years and years and years. So they're getting on this. You can tell, but they're, that they're getting on this at the right time because they only really need to use the weight of their bodies to tamp in the the texture. 
you know, we don't have to use a tamper yet. Usually when you start using a tamper, now they could use a tamper, but you know, they using those, uh, using the stamping shoes, they got those flat soled shoes and just the weight of their body. They're getting plenty good enough texture in this without pounding the stamps with a tamper. So that means, that means they're right on schedule for stamping. Nothing's firming up too hard yet. And you can see there's quite a big area here still in the sun. Now, as soon as they get across the slab, um, we'll have to start going in both directions because we got to get back to where those, we got to get back to where that little retainer wall is using those big concrete blocks. Now the sun's reflecting off that concrete into that corner, which is really firming up the concrete. So, you know, at least one of us has to start stamping back that way before that gets too firm while the rest of us keep moving our way forward here. You'll see here in a, in a minute in the video, I'm going to move the camera back a little bit. How much more we got to go. We actually got to get under a deck too. Now the good thing about having some of the deck of the house overhanging the concrete is it's providing a little bit of shade right on the very end of the concrete that we'll finish up on. So that's going to help keep that a little bit softer. So here, now you can see Luke back there. He's on the right, kind of going back towards the retainer wall. And then Darren, Harvey, and Sean are working their way down the concrete this way towards towards us. And this is basically the pace here, you know, one stamp at a time. Four guys being careful out there not to, not to bump into each other, not to push each other off the stamp so they step into the concrete. And just picking it up, working one stamp at a time. You know, usually one guy's over there, like Darren's over there, he's kind of working the the flexible stamps and finishing that edge up against the house and then Sean and Harvey are using the rigid stamps and moving themselves east to west but also you know north here on the slab and then one guy's you picking up the sprayer like Sean right there and he keeps spraying spraying some liquid release out in front of us so we can just keep going now that stuff does evaporate pretty fast so you don't want to spray too much out in front of you and you can just respray it if it does if it does dry up too soon on you. But you don't want to waste it by by just spraying too much out there. Now Luke being back there working by himself, it's going to take him a little bit of time. You know, he's got quite a good area back there to finish. The good thing about where he is right now is there's going to be a big hot tub sitting on the concrete right there that's covering up most of the concrete, so you know, not that that's going to mean he's going to stamp it any differently, but a lot of that concrete back there where that retaining wall is going to be is going to be covered by a big, huge hot tub. Now, Harvey, he's got some flat soled shoes on with the red texture on the bottom, so he could, he could actually step off the stamp onto the concrete if he needed to and provide a little texture just with using those shoes. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. You know, if there was an area... Just a small area maybe he needed to touch up. He wouldn't have to pick up a stamp, reset it to touch it back up. He could just use his shoes to touch it up with. Now you can see the tamper's been pulled out. So now you know, you know, it's it's really time to start hustling now because we still got a pretty good chunk of concrete to go. And if they're using the tamper now, it's just starting to get a little firm on them. So we don't wanna we don't wanna be wasting any time getting the texture in here. Good thing is we're getting down, you know, there's this one bigger part right here where the three guys are. Then there's that one little part back there where Luke is. And then there's another smaller part up here to the left that you can't quite see yet. So we're getting, they probably got two thirds of this bigger part done. And then the slab's going to shorten up real quick here and things will start going quite a bit faster. Yeah, you can see there. We got that roller. Darren was just asking me if I'm okay up top, and I just told him that, yeah, I'm okay if you can soften up a little bit over here. Send somebody up to help, but if I'll not, I'll there. go up there and it's ready for me. You know, I'll mag it out, and I'll I'll uh, I got my own sprayer up there with a liquid release. I got three or four of the stamps up there with me, so I'll be up there stamping while these guys are down here. And once they get this big section done, you can see where the sun in the shade stop start and stop right there they're almost to it up here in this smaller section you know then they're going to have they're going to have this thing conquered pretty much as far as having to worry about hustling too much you know the trick is just going around stuff going up against the house that slows you down a little bit going around posts that slows you down a little bit uh, working your way off the edge 
isn't isn't too bad, especially when the forms are set nice and nice and uh, flush with grade. You can see how nice those black poly metaforms can make that curve in that concrete. Uh, we basically could have made that curve look like just about anything using those forms. They bend they bend really really nice in there. When you pin them in place, they're nice and rigid, so they don't bow back and forth a little bit like uh, you know using using PVC forms might. You'd have to put twice as many stakes and something like that. And you can see Luke's back there now. Now he's just finishing up in that back section up against those blocks because he's got. You can see he's got that that floppy up against the block and then he's moving them back down this way as he finishes up and then Darren Luke and Sean here are going to finish this shady area up while Luke as soon as Luke gets done back there in that back corner he's going to jump up top with me although you won't see that until the next video <laughs> but you'll see when he does that I'm, I'm moving along pretty fast up there too there once this gets shortened up you know once the width gets shortened up it makes stamping go a lot faster because then you can you can lay out a, a pretty big block of stamps and you don't just have one line so you what in other words I mean there's quite a bit more area there to walk on because the area is not just one line of stamps it's a it's like a block of stamps and it just makes things going makes things go quite a bit faster there's more room for these guys to work Darren's using the roller he uses that little texture roller you know around the post up against the house and that speeds things up too. That means that you know you don't have to be quite as careful with the with the rigid stamp or the floppy stamp right up close to objects because you've already got it textured with the roller. It's good, you know. One good thing, you know, me, Darren, and Luke, we pour and finish a lot of concrete by ourselves, just the three of us. But it's really nice. It it, it really makes it nice when. You've got a couple friends that you know that are also really experienced that, you know, whenever you call them, they come. Like, they just don't say no. <laughs> They'll drop whatever they're doing, and and it seems like they every time we call, they show up. So that's, that's I don't know, we're just blessed that way to have some really good friends. And we do the same for them. You know, if they called, if they needed anything, we'd drop whatever we were doing, and we'd go help them because it's just a two-way street there. And... That works really good. It's and in times when it's you know when it's really hard to hire people and find really good dedicated hardworking people, you know it's nice to be able to network with other people to be able to get stuff done like this. You can see how they all work together, all in sync. No one really cares what each other's doing. All they care about is finishing the job and getting it done right and getting it to make make it look really nice. You know the key is really the key is is a, a very high quality job because the homeowners are paying good money and that's what their expectations are that's why they hire you or hire us because you know they want the best and they want to know they can trust the people who they have hired to do the job right and not uh, not to screw something up so you got to come back and fix something you know they want it done, done right the first time and that's that's what we strive to do is get it done right the first time because it's hard to fix concrete and make it look like make it look like the original. There's never a better feeling to know when you when you're getting right down to the end on a piece of stamp concrete and everything went really good, you know, and you just got those last few stamps, you got to put the you got to tamp them down, and as you pick them up, you're taking them off the slab. You're not resetting them on the slab. Then you know that, hey, we got this, man. You start feeling really good. And you know that as far as the day goes, you know, this day, this day as far as pouring and finishing concrete is just about over. Now, the cool thing is, you know, you start, you start pouring something like this at 6.30 in the morning. I can tell you right now it's probably like, 10 in the morning right now that's how fast and quick this process goes um, so you got a pretty early day so if you have other things you need to do you got quite a bit of the day left to get them done and what we're going to show you after this is coming back the next day so so what we do is we come back early the next day we saw cut our joints in this so we've already saw cut them in I have that on other videos and then 
what we're doing right now is we're washing off that clear liquid release you saw our spray on. Most of it evaporates, but there's still a little bit left on. So this is basically how we do that. And now we're gonna now we're gonna put the color to it here. All right, so this is as easy as it is to teak wash. Okay, so you mix the teak wash in the bucket, you get a nice soft soft bristle broom, and then you just broom it around and you just leave it like that. And then the color usually sinks into the lower spots and off the high spots, and that's how you get your your modeling effect, your antiquing effect. All right, so we've done this a lot of ways. You know, we've used the powdered release. We've used release, mixing some powdered release into the liquid release and spraying it on that way and putting the color in that way. But this is by far the easiest, the cleanest, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm convinced this is the best method for adding your added color to the concrete radios with this texture enhancer from Decocrete. And then you just, you know, you walk away and let it dry. And you come back in a day or two and you put the sealer on. And you can put as much or as little on as you want. You could put two different colors on if you want. You know, we've, we've done, you know, wood plank with this black and then like a walnut colored texture enhancer. And that looks really cool. And then here we are, you know, 48 hours later, we waited two days. And this is the, actually the third coat of the D1 concrete sealer from Decocrete we're putting on. And that's usually what we do. We put three light coats on just this, just at about this pace right here. I don't know how many gallons this took, but it probably took seven, eight, nine gallons total and three coats to put on this thousand square feet. And that's what it looks like. And then you can, you know, you can come back and reseal this at any time you want. You can do it a year later. You can do it six months later. You can do it three years later. It doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, this is how it looks. Let me let me know what you guys think down in the comments. How you think this looks? Thanks for watching. Stamp concrete with a curve. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.